light chains are reported. Um, there's three lines of how we report the light chains. We report the kappa, the lambda, and the ratio. Okay. When a person has myeloma, if we look at their myeloma cells, they have to decide one way or another. It's like male, female, so the plasma cells are going to be kappa or lambda. And that's what they're going to be for the rest of the life of that myeloma cell. That never changes. Now, what, what we do is when we order the free light chain to determine which one is the abnormal, we look at the ratio between one or the other. So I use this analogy. Imagine you look out at the patio of a school and you see, you know, boys and girls and they seem to be about equal in number. It looks like a normal school patio. But if you look at that school patio and, and you see that, in fact, there's nine boys for every girl, that would be a little bit atypical for that school. But it turns out that of those nine boys, eight of them are the same. They're just copies. They're twins. They're clones. That's how we interpret the light chain ratio. So there's an excessive amount of one. And then subsequently, we know it comes because there is this clone or this population of abnormal cells in the bone marrow. And that's what we measure by the ratio. Now, the ratio is just a simple computation of dividing the kappa value by the lambda value. The ratio is important at the beginning because it allows you to understand which one is abnormal. So if you have a very high ratio, for instance, kappa lambda, you would know it's a kappa. Or if you have an abnormally low ratio, then you would know it's the lambda, vice versa, because it deviates from that normal distribution that you would have, number one. The second one, the ratio is important in patients who, perhaps for other reasons, say for diabetes, don't have very good function of their kidneys, the kappa and lambda would, would go up, but they both go up together in about the same proportions. It's like a bigger number of kids in the same patio. So now you have an increase in kappa. Say so you could have a kappa of 10 and a lambda of 10, but the ratio is normal, and if I was to look carefully at the labs, I may see that the kidney function, the creatinine, is elevated, 2.5. So we see those abnormalities with, with, with the, the renal abnormalities, and that's how we keep, keep that in mind. Now, here's one of the best pieces of advice for patients. Once you know of your kappa or your lambda, unless the kidney function changes, or unless you're in a very detailed discussion with your doctor at very low levels, ignore the ratio. There's nothing that causes more stress than the ratio. The ratio is, for the most part, useless once you start going through treatment. Because at that point, you don't care about the ratio. You care more about the kappa. So if you're kappa, you should care about kappa or lambda if you're lambda. And, and remember that the ratio can change dramatically when the light chain that has nothing to do with your myeloma changes. And I've seen this in patients where you may have, for instance, again, a myeloma patient with kappa have the lambda go down and the ratio goes up. Both of them are normal. And we get a phone call, what's happening? My ratio is abnormal. As long as your kappa stays in normal, there's no worry with that. So a little bit of an uh, unusual piece of advice to patients. But once you know which one you have, I would tell you, for the most part, ignore the ratio.